marketed in that way today. Um, I will say that probably like in 98 or 99, the source, they used to do this thing where they had like the, uh, the next generation. And it used to just be like a feature in their mag. But in all actuality, one year they had Corrupt, Cameron, I think DMX, Big Pun, Lord, uh, Lord Tariq and Peter Guns, they had all of them on on a on a foldout cover, and they said "Raps New Generation." Um, when I got to become editor in chief of Double XL after Elliot Wilson, because once he finished his like eight year run, I ended up taking over. I didn't even know I was going to do it. It was just offered to me, and I said no. And then they were like, "Here's the bag," and I was like, "Okay, I'll do it." <laughs> I was like, "I'll take that," um, but. He had done a year prior, he had done Leaders of the New School, and he put like 10 different rappers in all white on the cover. And it was a little dark, so you really couldn't see them. But I like that concept so much because I had already been doing that in King Magazine called Coming Kings, where we would tell everybody who was coming out in all different genres, more than music and business and all that. So then I came up with the freshmen, and I was like, yo, these are the guys that are ushering in, coming in, and I put B.O.B., Wale, Kid Cudi, um, Blue, uh, man, there was so many of them, man. Currency. It, hit? it was a hit. Every, every, every young artist wanted to be on it. The ones that Elliot and, and, and The Source had done, they were doing artists that were like new but established, kind of, mm -hmm. in, in a way. Mine was more like, here are the breakthrough guys that are coming through. And you got to remember in 08, going into 09, um, you had, it was so dope. You had the explosion of blogs. You had the explosion of, you know, YouTube. You had the explosion of all these different new areas where artists could get their music out, outside of just mixtapes. You know, the mixtape game was like really the exposure for like 50 Cent and Cameron and the rest of them. But for Wale and all of those guys and B.O.B. and Asher Roth and uh, Charles Hamilton, it was the internet that was really blowing them up. And that was the difference maker. I wanted to kind of concentrate on the guys that were blowing up there. And that was a little bit early. You know what I love about that cover so much? Mm -hmm. is it really gave hope. Um, yes. To, to upcoming artists because you could yes. actually, like, I know artists who a year before were grinding, grinding, grinding. Yep. And they would be like, yo, I, I want to get on that, I want to get on that freshman cover. And they the next the year, you guys saw their grind, you saw their hustle and put them on the cover. So it was, it was, it was like, Literally, you guys were so in tune to what was next, and it gave these artists hope that that you know yeah. I could actually make that cover. I, it was so dope, man, and I wish I stayed long enough to do more of them. Mm -hmm. But the team that I I had assembled over there, especially like Vanessa Satin, who was who I inherited, is she um, still over there? I think Vanessa's still she, in. No, Vanessa got there as an intern in '98 as an intern and she worked nowhere else since 98. She's been there since 1998, just doing it. And she's had a 10 year run with the freshman brand now. And I have to say that her at the time, my man, Rob Markman, it's been so many different iterations of, of, of the crew that's carried that torch for that brand, that that brand is now synonymous with being dope in hip hop. It really is. Um, and shout it was to like, shout yep, to big Paul shout Austin. to, yep, yep. And now he's over at Genius, doing incredible things. He's an artist as well, but he's over at Genius, just redefining what a journalist can be. A journalist can be someone that promotes and informs the people about new artists, as well as him being an artist himself, which lends more credence to, all right. I understand what you're talking about as an artist because I'm one as well. I just happen to be a really good journalist too. <laughs> he's, a, he's an exceptional journalist. Again, yes, shout to Question for you. Was yep. XXL your first editor-in-chief position? 
Uh, no. Um, no, nah, it wasn't. It was King. When I when I came, yeah. Go ahead. Well, at, well, actually, it was bugged out. At towards the tail end of Hook, maybe like the last eight to to eight eight to nine months, I was I was changed from executive editor to editor in chief. But that was weird because it was like, you know, the internet bubble was bursting. Puff was just coming off like the whole trial and stuff. You know, it was just like a turbulent time, man. And all money was just getting snatched away from every internet site you could think of. And everybody was running back to print and running back to like their, their record label jobs and all that. Um, and this is like 2000 going into 2001. But then I was called by the people that put together Double XL and they asked me to come and do the idea I pitched, which was King. And it was like, yo, just come back and do that. Yeah, King Magazine was, I mean, for all guys, it was, oh, man. <laughs> it was an amazing magazine. And the fact yeah. that, you know, this was uh, uh, your brainchild. It, yes. it was an idea that you pitched, and you it's not like you inherited this from somebody oh. else. You got to go in and create this to your specific vision. That's a big, you, you guys have had all kinds of people on that cover. Um, oh, if I can man. remember some off the top of my head. One cover in particular yep. with Maya was incredible. Um, that, that was in all the rap songs. <laughs> you had Janet Jackson on that cover, correct? We had, we had Janet Jackson on there. We had Janet. Yo, Janet was a yo. Janet was so dope. She actually wanted to do it, but because you know we have been asking for a while. She had wanted to do it when her new her new album was coming out. And I'm be real with you, Janet did the creative direction for that whole joint. She was like, "Yo, if I do it, I gotta do it." We yeah. was like, "You do your thing. You do your thing, Janet." Yeah. I, well, yeah, I, I, yo, because I remember that cover. If, if I can remember correct, she almost had like business attire with with with. Um, with a bikini bottom or something, if I remember. Yes, indeed, black and white. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Like that one was dope. Tyra Banks was another Tyra one that Banks, worked. Yeah, yep. Super, super hard for her. Cause every year on her birthday, which is December fourth, I'll never forget. I would send her flowers. Um, I had I, I made sure like her team knew that we wanted her on the cover. And I remember when I met with her and her mom. Her mom is an incredible photographer, by the way. Um, so when I got all the shots together, I wanted her involved in the process and me, Tyra Banks, our photo director, we bought the light box so they could look at the shots and everything because it wasn't digital back then. Um, and her mom, her mom sat with us and we was going over the shots. I was like, yo moms, what you think? Da, da, da. It was such an amazing experience. We did that at their hotel conference room. And, um, I think about everything that led up into that moment for me to, to get her was being able to say, and, and the fun, oh, Sean, real quick, real quick. The funny story about that is when we were putting together King and, and looking at the different um, logos for the brand, this is before we even had the, the magazine out. We were like, what's going to be this logo that we're going to put it up? They had, the publishers had a, a placeholder photo from GQ magazine with Tyra Banks on the cover. No and, way. Yeah, and and instead of GQ, they just used the um her photo, and they had different logos for King on there, and they spread them out on the floor, and it was like, "Yo, day one, which one you feeling?" And I was like, "I'm feeling that one," and they started laughing because I was like, "Yeah, Tyra gonna look good under that." That's, that's <laughs> the one. And they started laughing at me in the meeting, like, "Stop it, man! You'll never get Tyra Banks." Like, like, we don't want you to think, like, we want you to go get Tyra Banks. You'll never get her, so don't worry about it. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, all right. And I remember that meeting, and I was just like, I got to get Tyra Banks. And when we finally got her, like, three years later, <laughs> we finally go got her. Was, I went right back to them. I was like, remember that meeting? <laughs> remember that meeting? And, yo, that's how I am, man. I just wanted that moment. I wanted them to see that. Like, you're not going to put a limit on what we could do and where we can go. Because people will say those type of things to you. And if you're not, if you're not into your own and understanding, like, what kind of power you have, they will keep you here. They will keep you here just from something that little that could have kept me here. 
But now I have a relationship with Benny Medina and, and Tyra Banks because I didn't allow their limitations to box me in. Oh, I love that so much. I love that so much. Yes, oh, indeed. that is such a gem. And I'm definitely going to be making a segment out of what you just said. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Question for... What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.